Hello, hello everyone and welcome back to some Age of Empires 2 casting. Today I bring you a name that a lot of people are used to seeing in casting games, but usually being the one casting. We have here T90 Official, one of the most famous Age of Empires casters and a well-beloved content creator by the community and we see already the community is showing the positivity. Uh, have fun with a happy face, you too. Always good to exchange pleasantries. But yeah, T90 official, organizer of the Hidden Cup, host of the Hidden Community Cup, in which I participated and won my bracket. Uh, one of the main responsible parties for the current state that the game is in, for the amount of people playing and everything, for the longevity of Age of Empires 2. T90 is a staple of this game, T90 official. And against him, I did a little bit of research. We have Shikso, I hope I'm pronouncing the name correctly. A German player who's played a lot in the in the in the last couple of years, over 11,000 11, matches, and his Zillow was a, has been a steady climb over the years. And currently in the Empire Wars uh, in the Imp Empire Wars ranked uh, ladder that a lot of pro players are competing in to qualify for Red Bull Lolo, Shikso is in the top 10, which is a, an amazing feat. So we have here two amazing players. This is High Elo on Arabia, a ranked match. And let's see what they go for. Of course, we have T90 in the blue playing with the Burmese. And this is a sieve you don't often see at my Elo. They have good elephants. They have a bonus to the elephant armor and then a unique tech that gives even more armor. They have discounted monastery techs, so they are great for monk play. The relics start revealed in the map for the Burmese player. Ooh, these uh, animals are a bit, little bit far away. But yeah, great monk play from the Burmese. And uh, they also have, if I'm not mistaken, some attack bonus on their infantry. Here we have... The Malians, another sieve that I don't often see at my elo. They have bonus armor on the infantry. They Their buildings are 15% cheaper in regards to wood. And that can make some transitions happen faster. That can make some timings be more tight. And um, one of the peculiarities of Malians, another thing they are quite well known for, is the Farimba tech in, uh, in Imperial Age that a unique tech that grants more um, plus five damage to all cavalry and that can be a game deciding tech and of course they have the gabettos as unique unit a very strong unit against against infantry we see both of them were pushing the deer three on wood for the malians oh and walling quite soon already and 1490 we see barracks going up Four on wood? Okay, okay, I've seen... It's funny, I don't usually play four on wood, but now that I've started to cast high relo, I Lewis went for four on wood the other day, T90 is now going for four on wood. Yeah, but you see the barracks have moved quite soon, the house, the palisade wall, both of them already walling with the buildings. The scouts here exchanging hellos. Yeah, they start with the... Uh, with gathering the hunt because it's faster and now they move to the herdables. Both of them getting loom at the exact same time too. Very similar openings from both players and I assume we're going to see similar... Yeah, feudal right away. The only second difference is one second idle PC time, probably it was the loading of the game. So the scout here, they're drinking a little bit. The barracks do not produce anything. Some gold, early gold Nothing. here as well. I'm very curious to see what these players will will go for in this matchup. Yeah, quite. Since the TC is near the edge of the map, you see some very early walling from Shikso. Yeah, the the yeah, and most resources are concentrated on this side of the map. This is already quite a safe wall, a safe base, of course. If you wanted to go for the greedy walls, very open map. He does fall off the berries, but quite a, a solid base, very dense. If T90 goes for early pressure, and he okay. does go for early pressure, I was about to say often when I see the 
for on wood it's to add a barrack sooner to go for the militia. Sometimes I see players skip loom to get more militia out and uh, tech sooner. T90 played it safe, went for, for the loom, but it will be hard to find damage here in this space. Yeah, the identical timing and we see archers for the Malians. Of course the wood discount helps in all of these transitions. Trying to get a house, at least, the, and we see an archery range as well. Only one on gold, so yeah, this could be skirmishers and not archers actually. Let's see. I am curious to see what the yeah archers, okay. And I assume with only one on gold, I assume this is um, skirmishers. Oh, it was so close. Finish the building, yes. Skirmishers forty ninety. Oh, one archer and then skirmishers. Yes, yes, yes. Both of them have double bid axe. The spearman comes out, the archers. The archer production will now uh, be in queue non stop, probably. Uh, archer and villager production. He moves on to the berries. Now that he has a military, he can expand Ooh, a little bit. Miss Micro there, running with the archers against the, against the 90s militia. Both of them on only on one lumber camp. Of course, this makes it so that the uh, woodcutters are less efficient. This hurts. Yes, uh, the woodcutters are less efficient with only one lumber camp, but it's a lot easier to defend. You only have one position to defend. Have all of your eco concentrated in one spot. Yeah, the archer production keeps up in queue, but T90 with a military lead. Maybe. And now that's some... Um, okay. This is a little bit of everything. He has militias, he has a spearman, he has... How do you counter everything? Even the scout. This is every single feudal age unit. <laughs> yeah, the five of them. T90 is like, how do you counter me if I go with everything? <laughs> Well, Shikso is going more focused on the archers. I do wonder, for example, that that's the one thing. If you have a, a, a versatile army like T90, uh, it, you're very hard to counter. But for example, now he gets fletching, it will improve the archers and the skirmishers, but it won't improve the militia or the spearmen. While Shikso with a more focused army, the upgrades will be more efficient. The troops are. <laughs> Easier to upgrade and T90 does find the first villager kill of the game. He's yeah 2-0 on the military KD, 1-0 on the eco KD. Good performance, and he does deny the berries now. T90 li living up to his name and denying the berries. <laughs> Walling here. Ooh, and this can find damage, yeah. Going for a more greedy wall, but with the base layout, this is not greedy. This is what had to be done. Yeah, sometimes this is damage that people underestimate. Destroying houses can make your opponent's timings and my macro and everything a lot more wonky. If you if you can find more damage, sure, it's better. But if you can't, if you're in a position like this, just keeping your army active, hitting a house, that's good enough. That will spend wood, that will make the opponent's timings be wonky, and yeah, the skirmishers are already at home, ready to deal with this army. And with equal numbers, equal upgrades, no, T90 even has padded archer armor. Great position. Military advantage, eco advantage, because of the idle TC difference, probably caused by the army pressure. And that's the one thing, uh, if you build your walls very tight, of course you have everything gathered, but then your eco is can be hit by range units. We see some military here on the defense, but the skirmishers make this so much harder to 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 migrate. If it was just okay. a melee, of course the archers could melt them, but skirmishers in feudal age are a very strong uh, a very strong unit. And now, in a game like this, one thing that's very important to look at: you may look at the military and everything. This right here, 19 on food. This is the number of farms. How many? Uh, 15 farms? This is huge. This is what wins the game. It's not this damage, 
It's not destroying one or two houses. It's not causing a little bit of a vital PC time. It's the fact that you can... All of those things piled up means that you have eco advantage. You translate eco advantage into castle age advantage uh, regarding the timings. And then castle age can win you the game. Yeah, we see uh, Chikso needs to use the market. He knows, he knows right away that Okay, my game is being a little bit messy. I need to click up to castle as soon as possible. He doesn't want to give a huge window for T90 to pressure. So the market was a correct play there. Yeah, T90 clicks up faster still. But Shikso with the great game instinct of balancing out the eco. Oh, and uh, castle is behind a villager. But the window will be one minute. Uh, 30 seconds, yeah, this won't be, thanks to the good economical balance, thanks to the market use, this won't be a huge window of opportunity for T90, and both of them have a respectable army. 5 archers and 4 skirmishers, the 8 skirmishers here do win the matchup, we see horse color and gold mining being added, horse color on this side, and it's funny because this is exact textbook play from what... Uh, from my coaching sessions with Hera. Click up to castle, then get horse color and gold mining. Yeah, here the skirmishers do make make it so that the trades are more in favor of T90. The idle TC time is low. Yeah, but now what will these players go for? Will T90 go right away for the monks, grab the relics, get the cheaper tags, use the Burmese bonuses. Yeah, this. And this. When you play archers, you want to have a, a death ball. Losing one or two units does mean that your army comp is a lot weaker. And Shikso is like probably thinking about a castle transition because he's lacking a lot of military. 90, even getting crossbowman and bulk and arrow, this will start being uh, an army that can kill so many villagers so quickly. We see siege. Okay, okay. A good play. And does T90 bring a villager forward? That's what we've I've often seen in these higher elo matchups. No, no, no. He instead of going forward for the all-in pressure, we sometimes see. I've, in some games I've cast, I've seen players adding a Siege Workshop and a Monastery. This time, T90 right away adds a, a second TC. He's going to boom while he keeps his opponent locked inside his base. The army will try to go around to, to trap T90s. He can pick okay. off some reinforcements. The army is in, and this could be a lot of villager okay. kills. How many will go down? Ooh, the timing on that mangonel! It spawned right at the perfect moment. This went from this was going to be a disaster for Shikso. Okay. Now it's a disaster situation for T90. Shikso deleting the building so that microing is easier. And let's see. Oof, another. Yeah, this right now. He needs to be careful. What? But T90, of course, even if he loses all army, he will start getting the eco advantage. And will he find some villagers? He does find one. Okay. He does find two villagers. Yeah, the losing the military is. Oof! Yeah, this was inevitable. Losing the military is a rough blow. But what the military conquered at this point was time and space to go for the 3TC safely. That was the goal of this attack. It got two villagers down, it scouted a bit. Of course, it is. It would be better if you could keep the units alive, but he's on 3TCs versus one. So Shiksu right now can't afford to be on the defensive. If he's on the defensive against a player with 3TCs, T90's advantage will only grow more and more, and T90 knows this. So, he's not going to give another option for Shikso. It's like, if you're on the defensive, I win, 
So I will force you to be on the defensive. And the army here, and this is what I said, he scouted, he knows the entire layout of the opponent's base. So he knows where he should go to find damage. And uh, Shikso here expanding the walls and T90 with such a horrible... When, when you are playing like Shikso in a game like this, oh, I'm going to expand the walls and units show up right at the time where you delete your walls and things like... You feel for, so frustrated. The crossbow is here too, find some skirmishers. But yeah, against all of these siege, sometimes it's better just get some kills and run away and 20 villagers leads from T90. That's what I was saying. The monastery goes up, he knows where all relics are, he has map control, but Shikso did at a castle and now he's going for the Gbeto. Ooh, and I'm not sure because of course he can raid with the Gbeto, but T90 has a lot of ranged units and the crossbows are efficient against the Gbeto. So let's see how, how, the, how this transition goes. Even though Shikso had another TC, he's still on TC disadvantage. T90 does have more eco upgrades, Balkanero. Both of them are even for idle TC time right now. And Redemption, yeah, he's fighting against Siege, the monks. And yeah, this is something we often see in higher elos, more and more compared to lower elos. Low elo players at one monastery, one or two monks, grab the relics and that's it. In higher elos you often see two monasteries, sometimes even three. Uh, the low, I don't like the lone mangonel going forward. It's You need to, go, to guard mangonels. Even if your opponent isn't going for knights. Yeah, okay, the gubettos now. Up in the mangonel and they are also efficient against buildings. Yeah, but... When you are playing the game, you have you can't look at all of these stats. The villager difference is already reaching the point, and that's the thing. Uh, sometimes you don't need to fight huge battles. You don't need to have huge engagements. If you talk about huge battles and engagements, that this mangonel killed ten units, super efficient. But T90 with a good decision making now paused for a bit. He's just running away with the game. He went for the greed of adding three DCs, and he wasn't punished because he didn't allow the opponent to punish in this situation and now he's running away with the game even oh good micro yeah with when the numbers of crossbows start getting big and players can micro they can start to counter mangonels a lot of floating gold yeah shikso having to buy stone and food yeah 25 on gold this is not farms win games i've said that many many times Eventually it will become my catchphrase. And T90 has 27 farms. Shikso with 14 and 6 of them were just added, so it was 8 farms for a long time. T90 adding the castle, the monks... Haven't grabbed any relic yet. They are busy here supporting the army. And T90's economy does start looking like it's good to go to in and this castle here reaching him first and in the castle age in the feudal age shikso was able to use the market to get a quick castle time so the eco difference wasn't that relevant right now t90 will click to imp and shikso is in nowhere close yes we see imp right away so traps will come out this position will fall and how do you play the game from there yeah, T90 playing this text. Oh, but the battles go in. That's what you should do. You are behind, you need to fight cause damage. You need to buy time, make the match chaotic, try to find ways to to to, to damage your opponent. And yes, battles are not good in the head-on engagement against the crossbows, but they are good for raiding. Oof, the castle now can target some villagers and the, and makes this economy a lot. Harder to manage, we see that Chikso finally moved more villagers to food. And Chikso calls the GG. Yeah, the this is the kind of game that is very hard to play. T90 is super solid, always keeping the opponent uh, under pressure. And then instead of going for any kind of flashy play, any kind of complicated, instead of going for the all-in aggression, the... No, 
It's just, I have space, I have time, I have army. I'm going to use that to just run away with the eco. This is quite different from the games I've casted. And I'm glad I casted this game because this is a win condition that a lot of players sometimes underestimate. Just running away with the game, just adding farms in the back. And of course, T90 is very vocal against the uh, auto farm placement. And I'm also not a huge fan of the feature. And we do see some far farms here. So maybe T90 putting into practice his opinion that auto farm is bad and getting some wonky farms down. <laughs> I'm just joking because of the T90. But yeah, it was interesting to cast some high level game. Of course, as I said, really tough match for Sheik. So T90 got in a good position with a military advantage and then was able to to solidify, to keep it solid. Maybe Sheik so should have gone for something more wonky, more raid sooner, but it's so hard to do that in the game. He did have the, the great Mangonel shots there, but uh, yeah, T90 adding the eco behind that, that's what, what won the game. Good decision making. Sometimes it's not about the micro, sometimes this is a strategy game, and T90 pulled off a good strategy. But as always, I'm the Nano, I had a great time casting this match, and thank you f for both players for playing it, and uh, I'll be seeing you around. Like it, the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you want to see more, and I hope to see you on the next one. Bye bye everyone.